Hello, and welcome to another episode of Practical IT. Today, we're taking a look at IT documentation and why everybody should have it, even if you're a home user. So when you think of the subject of documenting your home or small business technology, what really comes up? You probably don't know where to start, and this is a typical response that I get from nearly every client I've worked with. You can probably get away with not having documentation if you're just a home user and have a fairly basic setup and don't have anything mission critical going on. If you're a business and you don't have any documentation of your computers or network, you're in trouble. Your disaster recovery plan and business continuity plan, if you have them, are very much lacking in detail. This could mean life or death if your business location is hit by a disaster. As we go through this video, I'm going to go over some ideas that will help you get started on the path to documentation and hopefully help get you in the habit of documenting anything new that comes into your home or company if it's technology related. You have to start somewhere. The biggest problem is sometimes the easiest to overcome, and that is you have to start somewhere. If you have no documentation at all, sometimes the simplest place to start is with a spreadsheet, a word processing document, and your cell phone. The spreadsheet is a great starting point. This is actually how I started my documentation for my own home. I started by setting up a simple spreadsheet with the following headers, IP address, static or dynamic IP, description, login, password, port number, if it's needed, additional information, installed firmware, and latest firmware. And so let's take a look at that spreadsheet. All right, so here I've got just a sample of that spreadsheet with those headers attached. And in my case in particular, Given the number of virtual machines I work with, I may consider adding another column. And that would be physical or virtual. So then I've got IP address, static or dynamic IP, physical or virtual machine, description, login, password, port number, additional settings, and firmware information. And the firmware information is mostly necessary if you're talking about network equipment or other non-PC, non-Mac type equipment. So this could be your router, an access point, your phone, and other devices. All right, so moving on. Keep in mind, while I don't recommend leaving your username and password in this type of document on a long-term basis, the purpose right now is to get you started. Once you have a baseline of documentation, you can make sure usernames and passwords are put into a password manager and then make reference to that change. Please keep in mind, again, this is a starting point for documentation, and you may have other ways to record it, such as a wiki, Evernote, OneNote, or something else. The idea here is to spark some action. Some documentation is better than no documentation. Once you've got some documentation, you've got to keep it updated. Many people start documenting with the best of intentions. Before long, they get busy, or the boss puts them on another task that is urgent. Make sure you take action and get back to the documentation to keep it updated. You might want to set aside a few hours a month to add to and update your documentation at first. Once it's mostly complete, you can then schedule some time quarterly, perhaps, to update and review that documentation as necessary. 
The other part of documentation comes when you add something new to your network or retire a piece of equipment. You should have a procedure, especially in a business setting, to remove that item from your documentation and accounting if necessary, so that you don't leave yourself wondering later on, especially at tax time. Make sure someone else in your family or organization knows about this documentation. What happens if you get hit by a bus or have a heart attack tomorrow and aren't able to do the maintenance on the documentation or on the network or computers that you're in charge of? This is why it's important to make sure someone else, a colleague, family member or spouse or a close friend knows where to find this documentation and that it's easy enough for them to follow or you have designated someone for them to contact and give that documentation to that has IT experience and will be able to follow your instructions. So that brings us to the end of our talk about documentation. If you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Thank you once again for watching. Have a great day and get documenting.